Happy Hump Day. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Ryan Knows Tech. I'm going to make a, hopefully what will be a quick video talking about Mac OS X Mountain Lion. They actually seem to have dropped the Mac from the name. It's just OS X Mountain Lion at this point. A year ago, we saw Lion for $29.99 available via distri digital distribution only from the Mac App Store. A year later, this July 2012, it's now August, but... I'm still making the video. I know I'm the last, not the last, or not the first one of the party here. Uh, this year, it's ten dollars cheaper. It's only nineteen ninety nine. It's four gigs. Log into your uh, Apple Store account. You can download it via your iTunes Store credit or by um, putting a debit or credit card into your account. Takes a little bit of time to download. It is four gigs. Uh, I'm lucky I can download around four megs on my internet connection here, so it didn't take too long. The install process was very simple. I know immediately I'm going to get all the questions. Should I make a backup before I install? Yes, before you do any system changes, even if you're not doing system changes, having a backup, a recent backup of your machine is never a bad idea. Now, if you can't, if you don't have a backup drive or some way of, of making a backup of your Mac, it's not the end of the world. Do make sure that you plug into power in case something does go wrong, your battery won't die and you won't get totally screwed. Um, the chances of something going wrong are very low, but they do still exist. So yes, I would recommend making a backup. It is, uh, as I said, available through digital distribution only, which means you are going to have to download it, install it. Uh, for me, on a early 2011 MacBook Pro 15-inch with 16 gigs of RAM and a 2.2 quad-core i7 and an SSD, the install took about 15 minutes. Uh, it was not bad at all. I would guess average install time would be maybe between 20 and 30 minutes unless you're running on a very old machine. As we can see, it gets very good ratings here, which is a good sign. And this update really just brings Apple forward in um, corresponding better with the iOS products, the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the iPad. We now have iCloud integration even more than we did before, and uh, they, they work together so much better, and it's all instantaneous through Apple's iCloud network. Uh, so it's gonna make it a lot easier. There's 200 plus new features in this update. I do not have time to sit down and talk about all of them, and I guarantee you don't want to listen to all of them. So we're just going to go through some of the big ones here, starting with the notification center. If I take two fingers on the right side of my trackpad and swipe left, we get this over here, which should look very reminiscent of the notification center found in, the, uh, in iOS 5 and later on your iPad, Pod, and phone. Um, I do not have any notifications in there right now, but they would show up just like uh, they would on the iOS devices. It's all customizable from the system preferences window and the notifications tab within that window. We can see that right now it's not working with a lot of applications. Developers need to work on that a little bit over the next upcoming weeks and months. But it works with Calendar, FaceTime, Game Center, which is new, Mail, Messages, which is also new, Reminders, new, Safari updated, uh, Sparrow, which is Google's, uh, Google now owns it, and Twitter. If we wanted something not to be in the notification center, we could just drag it down there, and now Twitter's not in the notification center. Same thing, we drag it up there. It's just like the settings pane on an iPad. We can also choose the kind of notifications we get for each of these. So say for the Messages app, I want it a alert, which stays there until I click it to dismiss it, or a banner, which pops up in the top right, just like Growl. If you had Growl notifications for uh, OS X and a previous version of OS X, you know what those notifications look like. They're a little bit different uh, from Apple, but it's the same information. Or you could choose none. And then you have a couple options here. Badge the, iP the app icon, play some sound, and then show it in the notification center with X recent items. Uh, so that is very customizable. Um, notification center, it seems to be useful at this point. Um, not a whole lot. I really only have two apps that are using the app, the notification center right now. One being Sparrow Mail and the second being Twitter. And quite honestly, it is just as easy for me to open the Twitter app, come over here, click the at reply and see if I have anything new instead of working with an entire list of things over here that does not update once you've already read the, um, the information within the Twitter or Sparrow app. Uh, notice at the top, there's also a way to tweet. So we could do a test tweet from there, type that, click send. Um, if you put in different accounts, you can pick which account you tweet from and add a location, just like you could on your iPhone or other iDevice. Um, so that could be useful for you. You can now add Twitter from system preferences. I believe it's under mail, contacts, and calendars. You can add in all your accounts over here, Flickr, Vimeo, Twitter, AOL, Yahoo, Gmail, Exchange, and of course your iCloud account. Um, so that is how the Notification Center works. Now we have four new applications that come with Mountain Lion. So we're going to take a quick look at those. The first one was actually available in beta for, I believe, Lion users. 
And we all downloaded it and played around with it, but they've changed it a little bit. This is called Messages. If you have a conversation going on one of your iDevices, you get, you get home at night, you go to your Mac, you open it up, you can instantaneously resume that conversation and see the conversation chat history uh, on the Mac. And once you open it and somebody sends you a new, messages, a new message, it'll show up on both your devices. Pick which device of yours you want to use to reply it reply to it and then the notifications will only come in to that device instead of all of your devices on your desk dinging and vibrating at the same time and having a light show it will uh, figure out which one you're using and, and only use that until you change devices uh, so that is very useful you can also import different accounts here if you go into settings uh, accounts then you can import your Jabber account, uh, Gmail, AIM, any of that, and use this as a entire messages application instead of just iMessage um, with other iOS devices. So that, for me anyways, has been very useful. One of the other new applications is Reminders. Just like we have had in iOS now since I believe iOS 5, we can make a reminder at this time on this day or at this location, remind me to do this. And it'll bring up a, um, a blurb in the top right of the screen via the notification center letting you know what you need to do. And this syncs across the board with iCloud, uh, just like the Messages app. To uh, If you were to, to make an event, a reminder in the Reminders app on your Mac, it'll show up on your other devices. And likewise, if you make one on your other devices, it all shows up here. So all of this kind of works together. It's bringing the Mac closer to the other devices. Same thing with Notes. We open that up. We create a new note here. Five seconds later, it's on all the other devices. And we can read, edit, create, delete, share, all from here. The other new app... It's called Game Center. This is something we've had on iOS now since I think iOS 4, except this time it's specifically for uh, Mac App Store apps. But you'd log in with your same credentials. You'd be able to see scores and play online with other people through the Game Center. It's not something I use, uh, therefore I'm not going to review it, but it is there if you do use it. One of the other new features actually has to be turned on. It's called Dictation. If you go into System Preferences under the System tab here, you can see Dictation and Speech. Go over to the Dictation tab, turn it on. And then um, if you press your function key twice, or you can change that to anything else you want to use, anywhere you can type text, like uh, up here in the spotlight, or if we open up a text edit document, which is now in iCloud, by the way, so your text edit documents are kept in iCloud, but we'll, cl we'll click new document, tap that functions key twice. Testing the speech and dictation system in Mac OS X Mountain Lion. Hit the functions key again to, uh, to send that command. And same thing applies with this and Siri. It does not work all of the time, and it's really annoying. Sometimes it'll work beautifully. It'll get everything I say to a T. It even puts the punctuation in there when I ask it to. And sometimes it does this. It sits there and does its three little dots for five minutes. Then it shakes and disappears and has ultimately failed. And uh, it's really frustrating that Apple servers can't handle the amount of commands that are coming in, and they keep adding this feature across their... Uh, infrastructure of products, devices, and software. So they kind of need to update their servers uh, or infrastructure to allow for the, uh, the all the different commands. More of iCloud, Pages, Numbers, and Keynote now have documents in the cloud. So if I have documents in my uh, Numbers app on my iPad, I open Numbers on the Mac, which I actually do. I have a mowing schedule in here. There's my lawn schedule. I edited it today. I can open that up, edit it here. Three seconds later, the changes I made on my Mac are visible on all my other devices. All of the documents are kept in the cloud, and our devices are just nodes that go up to the cloud, make changes, save it to the cloud, and then other devices can go read, edit, review, share, whatever. And that makes it really easy to use multiple applications on all of our, de on all of our devices and have all of those changes instantaneously saved. A couple of changes in the Safari browser now. We'll talk about this first button over here. Um, it is a picture of a cloud. If you have web pages open on your other iDevices, you get home from work at the end of the day, you were using the iPad all day, let's say, and you had a bunch of documents open in different tabs. Now if you come home to the Mac, you click that, you can see everything you had open on your other devices. Uh, so that could be very, very, very useful. Then there's also a share button up here. We can share via Twitter, message, or email the page. Uh, a tweet just shows up like that. It's pretty simple. Pick which account, add the location if you want. And that's a really easy way to share. The other thing is they have removed the two search boxes up there. One of them was for a URL, you know, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.whatever.com. And the other one was just a Google search. They've now combined that into one. And it's smart enough to figure out if you're typing in a website URL versus just a simple uh, a, a Google search term. Uh, so that is really just making that easier. 
Aside from that, those are the only changes I've noticed in Safari. Um, aside from tabbed browsing, I guess, well, the tabs now, just like the iPad, uh, you utilize the entire tab space, and the more you add up there, they just get smaller instead of starting at a fixed size and growing until they don't fit anymore, and then they start to get smaller. So that's a bit of a change. And then if we click this button right here in the top right, it puts our tabs out kind of like expose so we can see everything that's open and easily shift between them. I should mention another way to open the notification center is that new icon in the top right. For me, I find it easier to use my two fingers on the right side of the trackpad to swipe right or left. But if you are old-fashioned and want to use that button, it is there. There's a few UI changes that I actually noticed to Mountain Lion here, mostly in the dock, the background of the dock. Uh, we seem to have lost our transparency here. If I open up a finder window and drag it back there, we actually won't see it. We do notice the shadowing changes a little bit as I get down, the shadowing uh, kind of dissipates. Um, it's no longer reflective and uh, transparent, but it is still there. If we notice also under applications that are open, instead of having that little blue or white orb down there, it's now more of a square. Honestly, it just looks a little bit more modern, as well as the trash icon seems to have changed as well. And uh, those are the only um, UI changes I've noticed at this point. Scratch that. One more change I've noticed regarding the dock here. If you accidentally come down here in previous versions of OS X, you could easily accidentally drag one of these out of the dock. It would poof. Then you'd have to figure out which one you dragged out. Then you'd have to go open it and repin it to the dock. Now they've corrected that by making it so you have to hold it out here a few seconds. Then you get that little icon there and it'll poof if you let go of it. So that just makes that uh, a little bit more idiot proof. The only thing I don't like about Mountain Lion up here is the battery icon now will not tell you how much time is remaining unless you go up and click on it. You used to be able to set it so instead of telling you a percent or just showing you the picture of the battery, it would tell you, for example, you had 4 hours and 19 minutes of power left. Now it just gives you a percent. I guess that's more accurate, but I do have to go up and click to see how much time it's estimating for me now. So the big question, is it worth the upgrade? My answer is why not? It's $20, it's gonna make it work with your other devices so much better. You're gonna get a little bit of future proofness, if you will, out of it. It's probably a little bit more secure. And uh, for $20, you really can't go wrong. Look how much Microsoft Windows costs. Their upgrades are not maybe so incremental, but they are a disaster to install and purchase. You have to go get a disc and license it on all of your products and pay more based on how many copies you need. And it isn't $20, and you can't do it from your own house. So how much easier is this? Why not? There's really nothing to lose. At this point, Apple's goal is to make the Mac work better and seem more... At this point, Apple's goal is to just make the Mac work better with iPhones, iPod Touches, and iPads. They've really integrated iCloud so heavily into the OS now, which I feel is a good thing. Uh, as, as soon as you set up the new OS, it immediately wants to know your iCloud sign-in information, so it knows your emails, it knows your Twitter already, it knows the documents that you have in the cloud already. Um, and installing an OS, you used to have to log in and set everything up and build it up from the ground. And now when you sign into iCloud, it already knows so much your contacts are there. Nearly everything you need is already there. It's really just making the entire Mac experience even more easy than it already was. Uh, and that's why I feel Mountain Lion is, is a good upgrade. It's not huge, but it's definitely worth it. This video was supposed to be short. Talk about some of the features. We did that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave, leave those below. If I missed anything big, uh, don't hesitate to read me out in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe if you like the channel. My Twitter is twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. And check out our tech blog, www.techinform.us. I'll try to make another video this week, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.